welcome to my channel and I'm back with you once again with another video of Microsoft Flight Simulator 24. Nowadays, I'm exploring the Boeing 778 MAX in the simulator and in this regard, I'm planning to, to make a series of videos of this plane so that I can just break down all the information related to a flight of this plane into different videos which will make it easy for you to look for a specific information on my channel. So in this regard, initially, I will upload videos in which I will tell you how to configure the FMC or the flight management computer of this plane how to start it from the golden dark state, how to fly it on autopilot, and how to perform an ILS approach and landing. This video is related to uh, the FMC configuration, and uh, it's specifically for all those people who are actually um, flying this plane already in X-Plane 11, X-Plane 12, or the Microsoft Flight Simulator, and they want to know how to configure the FMC because it's slightly different as uh, it's uh, not uh, configured through the tab just only the flight plan uh, you can do that the rest of the things you have to do it yourself so let's uh, go to the fmc if you press shift 2 uh, you will see this uh, initial screen which will show you the model of this plane and plus uh, the nav data so it's updated you can go to this uh, option menu go to the settings and over here you will see this iris align time now you can set it this is one of the things that you have to do so right now it's set to instant. You can uh, set it to real by pressing this uh, button and then you can also get the accelerated one. So if you set it to real, the iris align time will be roughly six to seven minutes, accelerated two to three minutes and instant, it will be done instantly. So if you go over here on the overhead panel, you will see these two knobs. These are for the iris alignment. So if you press shift eight, you will get this view. Now set these knobs to nav, and that's it. Now um, you will see that uh, you have the primary flight display and the navigation display working. Initially it was not. So now then you can uh, go to the weight and balance, and over here you can uh, set the passenger count. So you can set it to 172, but it will not take 172, it will just keep it at 136. Then you can also change the cargo. So let's say if I set it to 15,000 pounds, then you can do that. And uh, the fuel, you can also set it. Let's say if you want to keep 30,000, you can do that. That's it. So uh, with this, you can see that the center of gravity is changing. So right now it's 5.79. And that's it. Now, um, go back and go to the index. And now you have to start with the position initialization. And uh, this can be done directly from the electronic flight bag. Now, over here, you can make the flight plan. But you have to select uh, the departure and the arrival procedures. Uh, so as a beginner, you might not be really familiar with this process. So now I will go to uh, this uh, site, which is the Microsoft Flight Planner. And I will just go and make the flight plan over there. If you're familiar with this process, you can just skip it. Otherwise, you can just go through it. Now, this is the Microsoft Flight Planner. And uh, you can see the link on the screen. So, first of all, let's uh, select uh, the aircraft, which is Boeing 737. And uh, then let's uh, select the route. I will be doing the, this short flight from uh, Dubai to Qatar. So, it's uh, OMDB for Dubai. And uh, destination is OTHH. Just enter the ECAO codes for these uh, airports. Now you have a straight line. Although I will not go into the details of uh, the flight planning, I will give you a link in the description uh, which has uh, a complete video uh, for the flight planning in this tool, with, th with this tool. So you can just go through it if uh, you want to understand um, how to make a flight plan with it. So uh, just select uh, the departure and then select the route and uh, the whole flight plan will be ready. So I will be taking, for, uh, taking off from runway 30 left and uh, the departure is here in red color. So this is actually a procedure which not only uh, gives you the waypoints but also um, uh, the speed and the altitude constraints if there are any for the departure. So it's a procedure to basically take off uh, from an airport. And then this is the arrival procedure. Uh, once you are going for the approach, you have to go through uh, an arrival procedure it also has uh, the direction and plus uh, the speed and the altitude constraints. 
and then you go to the approach. So right now you can see there is a discontinuity over here because after this point you have to fly this approach based on the vectors given by the ATC. However, I will be deleting it. So you can just keep it like this and if you want to change, you can change, let's say the departure, you can click it and you can change the procedure. Uh, but keep it like this. This is the only reason uh, for making uh, this flight plan over here because it makes it really easy to select all the departure and the arrival procedures. Now you can just save it. So I will name it as OMDB to OTHS 737 and save the new plan. Now I can go to the plane and uh, load this flight plan. So over here, let's uh, select load uh, flight plan and let's uh, load it. And that's it. Now I can uh, send uh, this uh, flight plan to avionics and now you can see execute is now green. You can press it and the flight plan should appear over here. <laughs> let's uh, check it. Yeah, now it's there. If you go to this option legs, you will see the complete flight plan. And if you go to the route, you will see that uh, origin is OMDV, destination is OTHH, and runway is 30 left. And it has picked it up automatically. Now the main thing is uh, the performance initialization. If you go to this option, yeah, let me just take you to index. You can also go to the performance initialization from here. Now uh, you have to enter a few things. The cruising altitude. So uh, right now it's over here. Um, 350 which is 35,000 feet you can change it over here but it makes no difference whatever you enter over here the um, FMGS follows that so uh, the cruising altitude for this flight will be 320 either you can enter um, 32,000 or 320 and it will just take it now uh, the transition altitude you need this so for Dubai International Airport if you just click this option and go to the charts and for the departure. So it's uh, 30 left, if I'm not wrong. Let's execute this and go back and check. Yeah, it was 30 left. So if you open this chart, you will see the transition altitude, which is 13,000. And that's it. Because this is the altitude at which you will be changing the barometric pressure from the given one to the standard. Now the wind is not there. Now you can see the route. You can... Uh, let me just uh, go back over here. And uh, this is uh, the wind information for the Dubai International Airport. But you don't uh, get the wind at the cruising altitude. So you can just keep it like this. Uh, for the zero fuel weight, you can press this... Uh, Left soft key, you will get it, 146.5. But it's not correct. And it will say invalid entry. So for this, you have to go back to the menu and go back to the settings, weight and balance. And it's uh, zero fuel weight is 138.6. So we can always round it up. 138.6. Now the reserves, you can get it from here. So, I think, yeah, you can get it from here. So, reserves, six pounds. You can enter six pounds or 10 pounds. Just enter six, and that's it. And the cost index is actually a number uh, which uh, determines the range of the plane. Uh, so, it can be between uh, zero to 100 if uh, you're using a Larger number, the plane's speed increases, but uh, the range decreases because at higher speeds, the plane will be burning more fuel. And uh, small numbers will result in uh, longer range as less fuel will be burned. So usually when I'm doing flights, I keep it at 80 or 90. So I'll keep it at 90. We'll burn more fuel. Now that's it. So now uh, we have to uh, set uh, uh, the limit for the 
take off. So now on this screen, you have uh, three different settings uh, for the engine. Um, take off with the maximum thrust, 10% uh, derated uh, thrust and 20% derated thrust. So right now, uh, takeoff is set to 91.7%. So uh, during the takeoff, you, your thrust will be 91.7. And if you want to go with a derated one, then it's 80.5. Uh, if you derate by 8% and by 20%, it will keep it at 73.4. So you can keep it at uh, the first position. Now, these are the settings for the climb. I think climb, yes, you can individually set it. So during the, uh, the climb, you can also change uh, the power of uh, the engine. You can uh, go with a derated thrust. And now this is actually the temperature. Now during the, uh, the takeoff, what happens is, is that, you know, the plane um, uh, also uh, reduces the thrust. So right now, as we haven't assumed any temperature, uh, so that's why it's 91%. So usually there is a formula to calculate this. This temperature is always higher than the actual outside temperature. So right now, if it's 15 degrees, um, you can just keep it at, let's say, um, assume temperature 40. And if you enter this, this should decrease. Uh, let me just go with 50. Now you can see uh, this uh, percentage is redu reducing. And even with 60, it will reduce further. So what happens is this, that you know you assume a temperature and uh, you kind of uh, tell the flight management guidance system that outside temperature is really high. So it further reduces um, the, the thrust given to the engines. So you can keep it at uh, 60 because we don't have a formula to calculate that. We don't have any performance calculator. So that's why it's like an assumed temperature. But uh, even if you keep it at 40, and let's go with 91.7%. Now go to this option takeoff and the flaps will be 5. Again, if you have a proper uh, takeoff performance calculator, it will calculate the optimum flaps for the takeoff. So as it's not there, uh, you can set it to 5 degrees. Let me set it to 10 degrees. Yeah, and you can see the V1, VR and V2 are changing. So with uh, 10 degrees, the speeds decrease and with 5 degrees the speeds increase that's it now reduce thrust is also mentioned over here then you have to enter the center of gravity uh, it's coming as 5 but it will not take it so if I go back to the menu go back to the settings and over here it's 5.79 and just even look at it this is 6 so if I go here and uh, it was 5.79, yes. So if I enter 5.79, it will not take it. It will say invalid entry. And if you enter 6, it will take it. So there are a few things. Hopefully, they will be fixed in the future. Now you have uh, the V1, VR, and V2 speed. Just enter it, and that's it. So V1 is the speed, uh, which is the decision speed, whether you want to proceed with the takeoff or not. VR is the speed, is the speed um, at which you just pull back on the yoke and take the plane up in the air. And V2 is the speed that you want to attain um, right after the takeoff, because it is the speed at which the plane can still fly uh, with one engine. So that's it. So that's how you configure the FMC of this plane. And... Uh, now, let me just show you one more thing. You see with the CG, you got this uh, trim. So if you go over here, this is the control to set uh, the trim, whether to pitch up or down. So you can just move it and you can set it. So this green area is for the takeoff. You can just keep it over here. It just keeps on moving. So just don't move it too much. You can see it's, it's not stopped. Finally, it stopped. Can I stop it? Yeah. So this is a 5, 6, 7, and 8. So you can just keep it somewhere here for the takeoff, and that's it. 
So now, um, this is how you configure the FMC. But still, uh, there are a few things missing. Uh, let me just show you. Uh, in the VNAV, uh, you have to enter this uh, weather forecast for the descent. So this, as this weather information is not there, you cannot take it. But maybe in the future, request forecast, this option gets available. And uh, that's it. So maybe, you know, in the future, we also get an update in which we have a proper takeoff calculator for this plane. Now you have uh, the uh, V1, VR, and V2 speeds over here. The speed indicator on the PFT. That's it. So uh, that's how you configure the FMC of this plane. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section or if you want to add uh, anything uh, to this video, the comment section is there for you. Thank you very much for watching and have a nice day. Hope to see you soon.